Welcome to Small Business Talks. My name is Shiraz Sadiq, and this is the Entrepreneurial Resilience Series brought to you by Gavro Accounting Tax Law Advisory and Canadian SME Business Magazine. Established in 2008, Gavro Accounting Tax Law Advisory is one of the fastest growing professional services firm in all of North America. Their team of financial and business advisors supports small business owners on their path to financial mastery through strategic accounting, tax, bookkeeping, legal, and proactive business coaching services. Their team challenges entrepreneurs to step into the confidence and courage they need to overcome obstacles to build wealth, their business, and increase their impact to change the world. In today's episode, we'll spend time with Gary Bennett, the award-winning founder of GAB Law Firm, specializing in HR law and advisory. Generally, you would think of an HR lawyer as one who represents the employee in a difficult separation, but what about the employer, meaning you? What about your small or medium-sized business? Well, let's get into today's episode with Gary Bennett, founder of GAB Law Firm. Let's go. And welcome, everyone. My name is Shiraz Sadiq, host of Small Business Talks, powered by Canadian SME. Today, as you heard in the intro, we're here with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm. Welcome, and thanks for taking the time to be, be with us today. Good morning. Thank you, Shiraz. Law Firm. What is your area of specialty? Because, I mean, there's so many different areas. You can't do it all unless you have a team of 200 lawyers, uh, which you're not there yet. <laughs> which I don't, as yet. yet. <laughs> okay, yet. Okay, great. Uh, uh, what area of law is your specialty? I'm a labor and employment lawyer. That means I help individuals and mostly corporations who have hiring concerns or if they are firing individuals. I also help I also help corporations who are unionized negotiate with their unions. Some of them have to negotiate collective agreements. But more often than not, I'm helping in individual corporations who need to terminate the employment of someone. Okay. So we want to park unions for a second. Don't want to speak to that just yet. Okay. Don't want to speak to the well, maybe the termination area. We're coming out of some, uh, uh, and um, it's overplayed, it's overused, unprecedented. Yes, let me say that for the 487th time. Okay. <laughs> but these unprecedented times where we, ha we don't know because we've never gone this way before. And there's so many companies. Can I let this person go? Are they taking advantage of it? Do they really have COVID? Uh, I don't have the funds. I can't pay them. So I have to let them go. Wait, if I let them go, uh, it, what package is reasonable? What legal responsibility do I have to the business and to the individual? But wait, it's my own business. I can't lose my house to help somebody pay their rent. There's Precisely. a lot of challenging scenarios that you've had to help companies navigate through. Absolutely. And all of those scenarios resonate with me. So I've had to speak to employers who've had all of those concerns. What do I do? Who do I let go? How do I let people go? Should I let people go? Is it the right thing to do? Am I being safe? Am I not being safe? Those are all the scenarios that I've had to deal with during these times and help employers navigate through that quagmire, that absolute mess that has been created for them because Employers have been saddled with the responsibility of doing the right thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in a world where laws change sometimes weekly, sometimes daily, mm -hmm. we have had to, we've been forced to sit and look at press releases to determine what the state of the law is and then advise employers later that same day, this is what you should be doing. So throughout wow. all of the pandemonium, we have made it our business to stay on top of the law, to understand exactly what's been happening with mandates, with regulations, with rules, with guidelines, 
and then guide and advise employers so that they know where they stand. So something as basic as、uh, if this was a couple of months ago, we'd both have to lean back a little bit because <laughs> this isn't really six feet. That's right. And now we're in an environment where we can be this close.、Uh, maybe just a few weeks ago, we would have to have、uh, masks on. We couldn't have this conversation without masks, and now things are changing and evolving. Changing and evolving by the week. By the week, and so therefore becomes, as you mentioned, your responsibility and obligation to your business clients to make sure you're on top of it. Every single nuance that is constantly in flux. That's correct, and those are the types of questions we get. Should I put in a mandate? Should I impose mandates on my employees? Okay. How should I? How should I go around or work around this situation? How what policies should I put in place? Because some policies need to be in place for long term. In this season of uncertainty,、mm-hmm. many policies are temporary. But how far should employers go? What is my obligation to keep the workplace safe? And those are the questions that I help employers answer. Wow! Successful entrepreneurs and business owners who achieve greatness get there because they have the confidence to do extraordinary things. They have the confidence to make informed decisions based on their knowledge of three areas: where they are now, where they want to go, and the steps they need to get there as quickly and successfully as possible. Successful entrepreneurs and business owners get that confidence by being backed by North America's greatest business and financial advisors. At Gobro Accounting Tax Law Advisory, we support entrepreneurs and small businesses by giving them the confidence. Confidence they need to achieve greatness. To be the best, you need to be backed by the best. Don't wait. Get started on your journey to greatness today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in conversation with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm in Mississauga, Ontario. Some of the questions that we've just posed to each other,、uh, you've probably thought through. You've probably landed. Uh, you know, you need to put up your protective barriers. You need to make sanitation stations available to all your staff. You need to make other accommodations work from home. But let's get a little tricky now. Okay. Okay.、Uh, scenarios in which separation is required. That's a different kettle of fish. It's not like you can simply look at the next press release and、uh, the next mandate to glean that type of information. Correct. That's when they need to get in touch with. Your areas of specialty in law. Yes, that's true. Any time an employer is severing or terminating the employment of an employee, they should get legal advice. There are all kinds of considerations that employers oftentimes overlook. Okay. And and they overlook them for fear of spending a few hundred dollars on a consultation with a lawyer. All right. So let me give our audience a little bit of value here. And I'm not trying to give, get you to give up all your goods. That's not what it is. You mentioned a few considerations. Can you share? <laughs> yes, I'm trying to get value for everyone listening right now. Can you share one or two high level considerations? Maybe not the details of it because that's what you do. Certainly, but a, a couple of high level、uh, areas of consideration. Number one, when you're terminating the employment of someone. You need to be concerned that there are no human rights considerations.、Okay. What would a human rights consideration be? A human rights consideration could be: Is this employee pregnant? Is this employee disabled? Is this employee suffering with any kind of disability? Is this employee a member of one of the groups that the Human Rights Code in Ontario is designed to protect? These are all important questions that employers oftentimes don't consider. When they terminate the employment of somebody, but they are often the underlying conditions that cause employers to feel the need to terminate someone's employment. And without asking those、wow. questions, employers oftentimes jump into a, a problem that they didn't need to jump into. And with a consultation, oftentimes with a simple consultation, an hour to an hour and a half with me. That employer may spend a couple of hundred dollars, but save themselves a good twenty thousand dollars or so. That can be the impact. The impact can be that great or greater. So we're literally talking about that ounce of prevention、Precisely. versus that twenty thousand dollar pound of cure to make I, this all go away. I was not joking. I was not joking when I said a spending a few hundred dollars could save employers tens of thousands of dollars, literally. 
Wow. Now you've built out your base here in Mississauga. Uh, you started out downtown Toronto. And let's talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey, right? And you've stayed true to your principles of wanting to help businesses be more effective in how they handle staff, add, shrink, whatever the case is with staff. But you've seen elements that you have not liked where you've worked before. And that's kind of been an impetus for you to do it a little differently. That's right, Shiraz. I started out in Toronto on Bay Street and I was recruited from university. I was recruited straight out of law school from okay. a Bay Street firm. It was a dream job. It was a great opportunity. I loved it. I enjoyed every moment of it. But I always knew that my goal, my end game, mm -hmm. was to end up in my own firm. Okay. So I set out to Toronto. I, I set out to this firm to learn and understand how a law firm works, how the business of law works. How the business of law works. Okay. Correct. Because the business of law is different from practicing and being a lawyer. So we learn about being a lawyer in law school. Okay. Nobody teaches us the business of law. Wow. And ladies and gentlemen, we're in conversation with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm in Mississauga, Ontario. When we come back, I want to split that hair because that seems like a significant difference between what you do for your job, for your living, but how to execute and operationalize your skill and bring it to market. We'll be right back. Again, we're here with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm. Now, just before we took that short break, we were speaking about the difference between operationalizing what you do and what you do and where that comes together. Now, you'd probably say it in a different way. <laughs> well, if we're splitting that hair, the way I say it is practicing law and the business of law. Okay, so practicing law. So that's the skill. Correct. And the business of law, how you bring that to market or how you run your business. Okay, if you can explain a little bit more. <laughs> no problem. Let me help you with that. So the business of law is how you build a law firm. Okay. And it's not just about bringing in clients. It's also about growth. How do you grow your firm? How do you bring in more lawyers? How do you bring in more paralegals, more law clerks? So there's a it's a chicken and an egg type of equation. If we want to talk about building the firm, maybe we can talk about that now. In terms of building a law practice, most lawyers and many lawyers I mentor today have trouble building. They, they understand how to be a lawyer, but they have trouble bringing in the business and keeping the business okay. and growing their business to be to the place where they can handle the business that they want to bring in. Okay. So for our audience listening in, that's probably not unique to law then. That sounds like every entrepreneur's battle, the difference between doing their business and growing their business, 
adding elements like HR, Absolutely. right? And so what I'm also hearing is, well, you know, my, my background is sales, right? Sales trainer for a number of years, managing yes. large sales teams and being a direct contributor from a sales perspective. Sure. Uh, we always had sales coaches. We always had programs that they would send us on, but we always had a resource that we can lean into. For an HR department, when it comes to the matters, uh, the legal side, how often do companies really set themselves up to support their HR team to lean into? Unfortunately, not nearly enough. So the companies that I work with and the companies that I have trained at this point okay. understand that there are certain questions that their HR teams are well capable of handling. But when it comes to terminations and some levels of discipline, there are questions that have to be vetted through lawyers. Okay. They have to be vetted through a labor and employment lawyer. And that's where I come in. And the difference can mean between getting a, a an employee who decides to sue or to bring a human rights complaint because mm -hmm. they feel the way they were disciplined or the way they were terminated was wrong, or an employee who feels, you know what, the, the discipline is correct and it matches the wrong that I committed, and I'm gonna try and do better and be a good employee and contribute. So here's how I operate. In my practice, what I like to do is I like to train human resources professionals. I, I like to communicate with them as often as possible. And what I tend to do is for the employers, I, I train them to say, before you make your termination decisions, please call me. Let's talk about it. Let's spend an hour and discuss this case. Let's find out, are there any human rights concerns? Is this person pregnant? Is this person from a racialized minority? Are there reasons that you may not have thought about that this person is, is which are causing this person to behave in the way that they're behaving that might cause problems for your business? And once we go through some of those examples and once we go through some of the scenarios, we can oftentimes come up with a plan and a proposal that can either rehabilitate the employee or if necessary, terminate the employee in a way that is fair. Okay, so I'm hearing you, but I'm seeing your mind picture some ugly scenarios that you've probably had, some ugly messes that you probably have had to clean up in the past. For some of your clients, I would never get you to expose any details. Of course, some of the famous ones that we are aware of, uh, you know, a few months ago, this, the, the pharmaceutical company in the States were over a Zoom call, uh, a general Zoom call, fires a few hundred of his staff. And of course, the blowback was so tremendous. That uh, was bad. That is bad, <laughs> right? And, and and those are the ones that we hear about. Yes. Then there's always ones that we don't hear about. Can you share a couple, high level, of course, uh, some stories. High level. <laughs> extremely high level, right? Uh, of some messy scenarios where you've had to step in and be like, ah, this is going to be a cleanup job. You're right, Shiraz. There are a ton of stories I could tell you. And for the most part, None of them needed to be as serious as they got. They didn't need to go as far as they went to the Human Rights Tribunal. Mm -hmm. But they did because an organization made a mistake. They didn't get legal advice. And then they doubled down and bet hard on that initial bad position and continued. Wow. They continued. And so... You know, I've seen the, the hearing impaired individual that needed accommodation that could have had accommodation from the corporation, but the corporation felt that it had made a good decision, a wise decision without legal counsel and continued down the road of we will not accommodate this request. Wow. And they got hit hard and it was unnecessary. And once again, a little bit of legal advice at the right point in time could have saved them Number one, a lot of money. Number two, it was a federal company, very public company. It would have saved them the reputational damage as well. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in conversation with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm in Mississauga, Ontario. Now, the impact of handling things right and wrong from as a growing entrepreneur and as you know the owner or leaders of a small or medium-sized business, you get to a certain point where you really need to lean into the services offered by a professional, a legal professional in what they do. And you have just described some of the messes that can be created if not handled 
the way that they're supposed to be. So it's almost like this isn't a luxury. Not at all. This is a need. Every every corporation needs to have labor and employment counsel. Once you have one employee, you will need labor and employment counsel at some point because you're going to have to discipline someone. You may need to hire somebody new. You may need to terminate somebody's employment. Right. All those decisions require legal counsel. Earlier, you mentioned that some HR department leaders in their organizations or entrepreneurs, whether small or medium sized business of that size, they don't know how to engage lawyers. Uh, I've met your staff here and they're wonderful people. They're all looking in. Shout out to everybody looking through the window right now. It's 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 not that hard. You're not that scary. <laughs> not at all. It is so easy. All you need to do. And most people do this is they pick up the phone and they reach out to us, call us, ask for an appointment. Most times when a corporation calls, what they really want to do is have a phone call with me to find out, does he really know what he's doing? Okay. Does he understand a business like ours? And then we can get into the advice and I can help them. And so most corporations will call, some will reach out through the internet, they will email us, but please, it's so important that you get that legal advice when you need it. Don't be shy, reach out, contact us and set up that initial meeting. I'd like to meet with you. I'd like to meet with your HR team. And I'd like to provide that advice that will save you tens of thousands of dollars in a big mistake that can be avoided. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Gary Bennett of GAB Law Firm in Mississauga, Ontario. Thank you once again, Gary, for taking the time to share with us some thoughts, the good, the bad, and some of the ugly that you've had to deal with. But I think that might be the whole point. Let's avoid the bad and the ugly and make it all good most of the times. And again, thank you for taking the time to share with our audience about what they can do to make their lives a little bit more smoother when it comes to employee relations. Thank you. And I look forward to receiving your call. Gary, thank you for being here for the small business community, sharing what our rights and obligations are and how to proactively protect ourselves from the pitfalls that can lead to damage in reputation and litigation. Thank you to the team at Canadian SME Business Magazine for making this series possible. And thank you for spending time investing in your business to move forward with small business talks. The Entrepreneurial Resilience Series has been brought to you by Govro Accounting Tax Law Advisory, helping you reach new levels of financial success. Visit govrocpa.ca to reach those levels you feel your business is capable of. This is Shiraz Sadiq, paving a way for your prosperity.